What drives some people to want to start a business while others work a job? Not that one is right and the other one is wrong, but are some people driven by family history or are they impacted more about things that are going on in their community and wanting to make a difference? I want to know your thoughts. Post them down below, whether you're a business owner or not, and stay tuned. We'll talk more about this next. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Entrepreneur Insider. I'm your host and the founder of the Black Entrepreneurs Network, Tia Robertson. This is the show, as you know, that tells you all about entrepreneurs that you need to know about and share within your community. I'm excited to introduce you to an entrepreneur today that is making a difference, not only in communities of color, the communities around the globe. And she's doing that along with her husband by impacting how we eat. She's making us think a little bit different, right? We don't have to have a lot of money to eat better. We don't have to fully change our diets all at one time. Sometimes it's the small changes that make a positive difference for ourselves, our families, and for our futures. Stay tuned and learn a little bit more about India and veganish foodies. Welcome to this week's edition of Entrepreneur Insider. I am super excited to introduce you to our featured entrepreneur this week. Her name is India Russell, and she is the owner, along with her husband, Levant Stuckey, of Everything Good LLC. Now, note that emphasis on A and thang. <laughs> Their businesses include catering company with affordable vegan and plant-based meals, they're also the creators of the Everything Sauce, an agave-based flavor enhancing sauce that converts everyday meals and snacks into a gourmet experience. And if that wasn't enough to keep them busy, they're the founders of VegFest 413, the only plant-based vegan festival in Springfield, Massachusetts. This is the annual event that allows their attendees to experience produce and healthier alternatives in their current food desert communities. So everything they're doing is to help our communities of color. So we've got to applaud them. And I'm super excited to introduce India to you today. Hey, India, how are you? Hey, I'm wonderful. Thanks for that awesome introduction. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for everything you and Lamont are doing, especially in your communities. And so this is the chance for us to spotlight you. Can you tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? Like when did you start? your business or the first one of your businesses and you know why did you get started as an entrepreneur yeah sure so um it seems like a lot is going on but it's really kind of all connected uh veganish foodies um started as a lifestyle brand it was just a way for us to share with people our journey when we first started transitioning to a plant-based diet and then just educating people on the alternatives that we were finding to the foods that we were trying to adapt and change and try to make like a healthier version of all the stuff that we were already eating. So it was just sharing the journey and it kind of blossomed into its own thing. Um, the more that, you know, we were eating healthier and um, we were changing the way that we were looking, people were intrigued with like the weight loss that we were having and then just, you know, us sharing our story. So people wanted to learn more. So that's kind of where it all started with just veganish foodies and a lifestyle brand making a page on social media like, hey, this is what we're doing. Here's what we found today. This is how we made it taste good. And it kind of took on a life of its own. To, and that was like back in 2017 that okay. we just started Veganish Foodies. The everything sauce came after. <laughs> um, everything sauce was originally created as a way to help us eat more veggies. Because, you know, okay. veggies are bland, they're boring. So it was just something that... Um, 
I made one day to just help because whatever we were eating, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it needed something. So I like whipped up this sauce, didn't think nothing of it. And then um, Lamont, he's really the reason why this sauce is existent because he kept asking me every day, like, do you remember that what you made in that sauce? Like, make it today. Every day he wanted me to make the sauce. So I was like, okay, but I didn't really think anything of it. Um, we were trying to also have our family transition to more plant-based stuff, but they didn't care about the healthy food. They were like, give me this sauce. Like, can you just make it, bottle it so I can put it on what I want? I want to put it on some chicken, some burgers. Mm. And I'm like, that's not what the sauce is for. <laughs> so it kind of like took on a life of its own also that we thought like people were requesting it, our friends and family. So mm -hmm. I'm like, we're like, oh, maybe people would want to buy the sauce. So we started bottling it up and selling it. And it kind of took on its own life of its own as well to the point where we had to separate the two because a lot of people were like, I want to try the sauce, but I'm not vegan or plant-based. And we're like, you yeah. don't gotta be vegan or plant based. Like exactly. you want the sauce, you got the sauce. So they're kind of started up together, but now they're kind of like both separate entities where we still cater the vegan food. Um, but the sauce is literally um its own thing. People buy it online, people come and pick it up from us. And then we also have it in a few restaurants in um Connecticut and rest in Springfield where they're using it on food that they sell there. So India, um, can you tell me a little bit more about your journey to um, a more plant-based diet? How did you change your diet and what prompted you to, to want to change your diet? Yeah, absolutely. So my whole thing literally started because my health was declining um, as well as my husband. We were having a lot of health issues. Me in particular, I was having um, inflammation in my shoulder and in one of my legs. And then one of my legs also, I was having edema, which is just internal swelling that there's a reason why it's swelling, but I didn't really know what was going on. And then my husband was having a lot of gut health issues, just like issues with his abdominal um, things eating that he was eating that was bothering him. And then um, as a collaboration, both was having a lot of issues with um, constipation, which is like a big issue for a lot of people. So um, that's what um, impacted and really made me want to switch and just learn about more healthier stuff, not necessarily become vegan. Um, you know, in the beginning, I didn't even know um, all the details between the difference of being vegan or vegetarian. So I kind of wanted to create my own box, <laughs> which led me to be like, I'm not vegan, but I'm vegan-ish. Like I kind of want to be vegan, but not fully um, want to be all the way vegan. So um, literally just having health issues and not knowing where to start, or what to do is kind of what led me into like learning more research. Yeah. Now, um, what do you do when you, um, because let's keep it real, right? A lot of people of color are like, I want my steak. I want my big piece of chicken, <laughs> right? I need my ribs from our barbecue. So what do you, you know, do when people are like, well, what would we barbecue or what would I eat? Like, you know, how do you answer that? Uh, it's just all about learning what's out there for the alternative. So I really push alternatives because if I personally didn't have the alternatives to things, then I probably wouldn't have been as successful with my journey. Um, so it's literally just starting with one thing. I think a big misconception is that when people think about getting healthier, going vegan or plant-based, they just focus on like, I have to eliminate everything. I have to starve myself. And I want to basically um, just let people know that you don't have to eliminate everything and you don't have to starve yourself. I'm all about options. I'm a foodie first. Before I'm vegan, plant-based, I'm a foodie. So um, it's all about 
figuring out which category that you want to focus on. Don't try to tackle everything and say, like, I'm getting rid of meat. I'm getting rid of dairy. I'm getting rid of sweets and junk food and fast food. Like, you have to pick one thing. So I really advocate, like, pick one thing. And even in the category, if you want to, like, reduce your intake of meat, don't try to get rid of all the meats. Just pick one thing. Like, I started with pork. And I started with pork because it was the least of all the meats that I ate. So I felt that that would be easiest for me to get rid of and then move on to something else. And then um, the alternatives is that there's a lot of um, meaty vegetables and fruits that you can um, doctor up, you can fry, you can do all these things to make it look like a meat, um, to make it look like a meat. And a lot of people don't know that. They don't know how to do that. And I feel like that's like, on another level another tier of plant-based but if you're looking to just like have an alternative to the um okay i'm sorry you want to okay. <laughs> um <clears throat> So yes, I'm back. Yeah, um, we can edit that out, don't worry. Okay. So <laughs> the um basically if you're looking for an alternative for you know um, meat or fish or stuff, the great thing is that we're living now in 2020 and it's not like back in the 80s and 90s where all you could do is eat vegetables. There's a lot of um pre-made um, meat alternatives that you can buy in the grocery section of the store where you're going to get your meats anyways. And they look familiar to the eye and, you know, you may have to add some different seasonings, whatever you like to get that familiar taste that you're looking for. But the alternatives are there. There's a lot of shortcuts out there where you can start. There's a lot more restaurants, depending on like which coast of the world that you live on, you may have more access to things or you might have to learn how to cook more it really is just depending on what you want to do but i think that to not get overwhelmed just start with that one thing and then if you want any tips or anything you know follow me i give you like all, all the tips on how to recreate something because um a lot of people when they see our meals they're like that doesn't look like vegan that looks like macaroni and cheese and chicken and i'm like it is but it's just a healthier version is all vegetables too. You didn't know that you can take vegetables and recreate and make them look like all the stuff that we already love to eat. Perfect. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. And then one last question. Do people um, have to maybe consider a vegan or a plant-based lifestyle because they have a medical condition? Or like I know a lot of times people are like overwhelmed with like visits to the doctor or like you mentioned, they have some sort of symptom that's prompting them to go to the doctor. But can sometimes people just kind of say, hey, this is just something that I can, you know, can do. I can just change my, my lifestyle and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to just change your lifestyle, then that's even more, you know, inspiration for you to learn about plant-based and healthier alternatives. Um, I think, especially for our community of people, we have a plethora of health issues mm -hmm. that is getting younger and younger and younger. And we have the mindset to believe that um, you know, diseases and things run in our families. And mm -hmm. I just want people to understand that it's bad eating habits that run in our family. It's not necessarily these diseases run in our family because everything just about is reversible. And a lot of times we're comfortable, we're more comfortable with like, well, I got to do what the doctor said because the doctor said this. Mm -hmm. And even for my own personal experience, I have a 15 plus year background in the medical field, working in the medical field and a plethora of different jobs. And I went the traditional route that we're told to go to. And what I was experiencing is that I wasn't getting any answers. I wasn't getting any relief. I wasn't being properly diagnosed, but I was always being prescribed something. And I thought that that was very peculiar. If you can't tell me 
What's the root cause of my symptoms? If you cannot give me a diagnosis of what I really have going on with my body, but you can keep prescribing me something, you're basically experimenting on me. Absolutely. And yeah, you're experimenting on me. And then everything that you're giving me is one, either making me sicker or um, adding on to my issues. You're giving me new problems so that I can come back so that you can just keep prescribing me stuff and keeping me sick. Um, the, the thing about us living in America is that we're all on a sad diet. You know, the standard American diet, I just call it the sad diet. <laughs> and then, you know, we're just reliant on these doctors and, you know, they're doctors. Yes, they went to school. Yes, they know their stuff. But me personally, I've seen doctors Google things. They don't know everything. They're not God. And they're experimenting. They're just trying. That's why they say, hey, try this. Come back in 30 days. That doesn't work. I'll give you something else. And you're just on that roller coaster of not getting any relief. Your body is like breaking down more and you're feeling more like crap. And then you're you're taught to believe like, well, you know, if, if grandma and, grand, and grandpa had these same problems, it just runs in the family. And Another thing that um, for myself that stuck out to me is that I I took my health into my own hands and I said, screw what these doctors are telling me. Like, I'm going to figure out what is. I'm just going to figure it out. Like, if they're telling me that I have inflammation or I have um, edema, let me start figuring out what causes it because they're not telling me. And when I started to do my own research, I started to find that everything that I was finding was saying that the main cause of these problems, even with gut health and constipation is, a um, diet high in meat and dairy. And I just thought like, wow, when we get sick, we never think about what we're eating. We think about everything else, but we never come to that conclusion that it may be because of what I'm eating. Never. So that was a big thing of why I wanted to be like, okay, let me learn about healthier alternatives because I don't want to starve myself. I don't want to just be like, I'm salads and smoothies. Like I like to eat, but let me learn about ingredients. Let me learn about alternatives on how I could add instead of just eliminating everything. So that's what I'm a big advocate of. Um, I focus on reduce and replace, reduce and replace, reduce and replace instead of just eliminating because even when you're eliminating, you're not knowing what to eliminate. You Absolutely. don't want to starve yourself. And then you don't know how your body is going to um, react if you're just eliminating stuff. Or even though there's lots of alternatives out there, every alternative is not for everybody. So mm -hmm. that's why you have to start with one thing, implement it into your you know, your daily lifestyle, see how your body reacts to it, see if you even like it. If you don't like it, Trust me, there's another alternative out there for you, but you just have to start with one thing and learn as you go, implement as you go, re reduce it, eliminate it if you need to, but then also find the alternative because that's what I was struggling with in the beginning. Like I was eliminating, eliminating, eliminating like that. Like I don't eat none of these categories anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I didn't know where to find a lot of this stuff. So I've done like, you know, this is like, year six or seven for me that I've been completely, now I'm completely plant-based uh, plant vegan, but it didn't start that way. Like I was one of those people, like I'll give up everything except chicken. I cannot let my chicken go. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the more I learned and the more you understand the process of like how the things come from the corporations into the store, into your house, like that will make you more cognitive to be like, okay, maybe I don't need that. And maybe there is something out there that I can, you know, replace it with to still get that fixed. Because when we're eating meat, it's all about the texture. It's all about the chewiness. When we're wanting um, some something savory, it's all about the saltiness and the butter of it. So if you understand that there is, you know, vegan butters out there that have the same salt and the same kind of buttery creaminess to it. If you learn that there's cheeses out there, not all of them are good. I will advocate for that, but there are a few brands that melt just like regular cheese. You can add things to it to kind of um, give you that saltiness that you're lear learning about. Basically what I'm saying is that you have to 
eating better for yourself and for your family is all about learning flavor profiles. So mm -hmm. if you want something to be sweet and savory, then you have to find the ingredients that are going to give you that, that are healthier for you and not high in salt salt and sugar mm -hmm. um but still give you that familiar taste that you're looking for because it's all about the taste if it's savory if it's sweet for meats you want to find um meaty fruits and meaty vegetables like jackfruit uh mushrooms um cauliflower um those are all like meaty vegetables that literally however you season it if you put some chicken seasoning on it if you put some jerk seasoning on it, you are going to get the flavor that you're looking for. And then because the the vegetable is has a meaty texture, fleshy vibe, then you're getting, it's feeling like meat when you're tasting it, but it's not meat. It's looking like meat when you're, you know, pan searing it and giving it that skin like um, texture that you're looking for. So it's looking familiar and it tastes familiar and it's healthy for you and nobody had to die in the process. Yeah. <laughs> that is really good to know because yeah, people do make it seem like you have to go vegan or plant-based because you have a medical issue. And then when you do it, you have to do all at the same time and ignore the fact that sometimes it can be expensive. So I definitely love your strategy of, you know, replacing one thing at a time and trying different, um, different food options. Cause that kind of helps with the budget as well. So Cool. Sure. Thank you so much, India. This was super informative. I was going to say major informative, but I think, don't think that would have been grammatically correct. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I do want to add just one last thing yeah. that um, I, I definitely advocate for like, you don't have to go fully vegan, but you know, everybody wants to get healthy. And I can say that me and my husband's health issues totally like went away. Wow, that is good to know. And you mentioned you had experienced some weight loss, right? Which is great. well, yeah. I think that's just a just a natural side effect because we don't understand that, like, if we're if our diets are high in meat and dairy, meat, especially red meats and pork, your body, like, I'm actually any meats, but you know, fish and chicken is more on the your body can easily digest it versus the um, pork and the beef. It just sits in your stomach. So it's not going anywhere. And then we're just, we just keep adding it, adding, mm -hmm. adding it. And that was a major thing of like why you're constipated and can't go. And then the dairy, any kind of dairy that you're eating that is animal based dairy, it causes mucus in your body. So it literally okay. will cause blockages and not letting your blood flow constantly. Um, and then your body's also not able to digest it and break it down because you're not a baby cow. Right. Yeah. Even though that we've been taught for years, like milk does the body good. It makes your bones strong. It gives you calcium. Like all of these things is fake news. Like, I'm sorry to say it, but it is. And then there's just that conception is that like, okay, I just had a baby. When I have a baby, like my body is going to produce milk for the infant child <laughs> it's not for like a long-term thing so it's the same thing with the animals like they're producing the milk to help the you know their calves turn into this four or five hundred pound animal we're not four or five hundred pound animals so um the thing about humans is that we're the only species to drink milk outside of infancy and then we're the only ones that will drink milk of another species yeah, good point. I'm glad yeah. That's very eye-opening. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. And then we wonder what's wrong. It's like, uh, that wasn't made for you, right? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't made for us, and it just, like, makes us feel, feel like crap. So I think just even altering that a little bit, you're going to experience weight loss no matter what because you're changing your diet. Your body is being shocked by you, like, either eliminating it or replacing it with something else. So I think that is just the major side effect. I did did lose a lot of weight um and I was just in the beginning of my journey of um trying different things I did no exercise so I lost all the weight and so did my husband no exercise no crazy fat diets it's just literally every day I was on the hunt of saying like okay what can I implement today what can I reduce today and that was my that's been my strategy all the way up until now I'm fully vegan but every day I still do the same thing. Like, what can I implement today? What can I reduce today? Because even on the plant-based, so like I've 
fully plant-based now, but I'm now working on reducing, um, you know, the frozen plant-based meats gotcha. and working on how to make my own meats and how to just do more vegetables because even though it's plant-based and it's frozen and I can just pop it in the air fryer or something, it is still processed. Like, let's just put that out there. It's still processed, but it's still a better option than, you know, eating greasy uh, McDonald's or, you know, stopping. It's fast, but um, in the end, you're going to pay either way. You're going to pay now or you're going to pay later. So, <laughs> and paying later is not the way that you want to do it. That is an amazing journey. So thank you so much for sharing it. I know you're a mom. Like, are there any tricks to getting your kids to, you know, Try vegetables or convert to kind of a vegan or plant-based lifestyle besides the everything sauce? Or is that really the key to getting them to try it? Well, um, my daughter, I've been raising her plant-based since she was born. So it's kind of like I just all introduce her to fruits and veggies. I think that the earlier you're introduced, the better chance that you have to actually liking it and not being afraid of vegetables or not saying like, I don't like that or being forced to eat it. Um, but kids do love the sauce. Like everyone of all ages love the sauce. It's a nice, um, subtle, sweet heat. So it's not too spicy and it's not too um, sweet. It's not too overpowering and nothing lingers. So I really haven't had any issue with kids as far as the sauces. So um, I'd love to send you some and see if that helps <laughs> you definitely. get your son to eat some more veggies. So. Yeah, definitely. He needs to eat some. His sister too. She's a teenager. So, um, <laughs> but and even myself, like I, I do eat veggies, but definitely I'm all for like, what can I put on here? Like he said, to make it have some flavor and sure. it's definitely more appetizing. Um, so who is, and I, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, right? So who is your target audience? Um, I know you mentioned that people that aren't just plant-based or vegan like your sauce, um, but even with your catering company is your, those are, that's vegan and plant-based food, right? Correct. So that audience is a little bit different than the everything sauce audience, or do you find that they're all kind of similar audience? Yes. Initially, we our target audience is people who are interested in transitioning. So you're not fully vegan. You're not fully plant-based. You are at the beginning of your journey and you just want to incorporate healthier stuff. You don't necessarily want to be vegan or plant-based. And um, the reason that that's our target audience is because that's how we started. So vegan niche is kind of like, you're not vegan. You don't want to be vegetarian. You don't want to be in a box. You want to make your own box. You don't want to be too much of a stickler or have so many restrictions. You want to have more options and you just want to eat healthier food that's familiar to the eye, flavorful, but still healthy that you are still able to enjoy it fully, not like restricting yourself. So that's how we started. And we just want to like open the floodgates so that people know that, hey, everyone doesn't want to be vegan, but everybody wants to get healthier. Everybody wants to feel better. So this is the way that you do it. You start with one thing, one meal at a time. And you, once you get started on your journey, your journey will take you wherever it's supposed to be. But it's just getting started is the hardest part. And we want to like make that an easier route for people. So Absolutely. If you turn out vegan, then hey, that's great. But that's not necessarily a thing. Like if you eliminated certain things and it implemented more healthier things, then you're on the right track. So definitely, that makes a lot of sense. And I and I like it too because it appeals to a broad audience, right? No matter like what your race is or where you live, definitely there's somebody that's interested in either becoming one of your catering clients or ordering the sauce for their food. Absolutely. And tell me about um. Veg Fest. So it happens in what part of the year? So our annual Veg Fest this year is happening um, April 10th. Okay. And it's um, usually the same time from 12 to 530. Um, initially, when we started it back in 2020, right before the pandemic, um, we had it where we were going to do one in the winter and then one in the summer. Um, but so far, it's just been like one time throughout the year. So 
Um, last year we had it in the summertime, like around August. And then this year we're doing it in April, maybe because everything is kind of going back to normal, normal this year. Maybe we can do another one later, like closer to the end of summer, beginning of fall. So our goal is to have it twice a year, but so far it's been once a year, right between spring, summer time. Yeah. And is it welcome to like, other vendors and like food growers in your area to come and bring, are they the ones that are bringing like their produce and, you know, their healthy foods to kind of expose people that are living in a food desert or is it, um, or do you cater the entire event or what do people, ex what can they expect when they attend Veg Fest? So Veg Fest is a festival where we have vendors from all over. Um, we get people from Boston, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. People come from all over to come, which is a great thing. Um, when we first started it in 2020, we just wanted to create something here because a lot of times like where we live in Springfield, you have to go on the outskirts. You have to go like a half an hour away to find something healthy. And then me and my husband, we're foodies. We'll travel for food. We go to festivals all the time. So I was like, the last time we went to a festival, I'm like, I'm tired of having to drive an hour, two hours, three hours. Let's create our own festival. We thought it would be like a small turnout because we're like Springfield, you know, there's not a lot of vegan people here and there's not a lot of vegan restaurants either. Um, so we didn't know how it was going to turn out. We just threw it. We found some vendors and the turnout was like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, there is people here that want to mm -hmm. eat better. If there was here, I really believe that if there was just more accessibility here in our town where you don't have to leave out, you can just go down the street, people will come. So that's kind of like how it started and then every year just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so we're expecting um over a thousand people to come out this year and try like all the vegan foods so everything is not fruits and veggies let me just <laughs> put that out there we have a lot of um vendors that come with a lot of different desserts that are vegan we got a lot of people that are doing fresh um fresh juices we have people that are making you know burgers subs sandwiches chicken all vegan last year we had um and i believe that they're coming back we had a vegan online grocery store completely black owned where you can order all your stuff and they'll ship it to you no matter where you live um, we have things for the kids, uh, free face painting. This year we're incorporating um, workshops, different workshops that people can go to and learn about different vegan stuff, maybe watch some documentaries. And we also have some guest speakers this year. So every year it's growing mm -hmm. and I'm just super excited about it. And I yeah, Absolutely. That sounds like an amazing event. I need to come up to Massachusetts and plan a trip so I can uh, yeah, plan absolutely. it. There's definitely, I'm one of those people that really is like, there's so much to learn and I definitely know I can eat healthier. So that sounds like an amazing event. And definitely when you do um, have... Oh, it sounds like you have a date, but you know, if you have, have any other events, um, not events, any details about the event that you want to share, feel free to let me know and we'll be sure to share it with our audience as well. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as an owner of a business or you know, a business, several businesses with uh, or business with several offerings, I guess should I say, um, as well as like a product that needs things like bottles and labels and marketing. So I imagine there's a lot of moving parts, right? You know, organizing events and keeping track of customer information. How, what's the best way that you find yourself staying organized? Like, do you have a team? Do you outsource any of your tasks? No, the, this whole, whole journey has been literally trial and error. I just have a team of two. It's just me and my husband. Um, sometimes we can like, you know, pull our family members in to help us, especially when we're doing events and stuff, but literally for our catering and for our sauce process, it's literally just me and him. Um, we are, you know, speaking a team into existence. Uh, we really, really need more help, but you know, when you get started, it's going to be a lot of you wearing many, many hats and having to like stretch yourself and be all over the place 
in the beginning, but it's really worth it. I feel like if anyone is wanting to start entrepreneurship or start a business, like start it, especially since the pandemic, there are so many resources and so many people that are looking to support you and invest into your business. So you just have to know that in the beginning, it's just you. So you have to be the organizer. You have to, you know, be the delivery, the shipping, all of that, all of that stuff, the inventory, it's just a lot of you. Um, the good thing that works with the team of us is that I'm more of the organizer and, you know, keeping the books and keeping track of everything. He's really good with like being the word of mouth and he knows everybody. So he's mm -hmm. good with the marketing and the advertising. So we kind of do work well together, but um, yeah, we're always open to getting more help for sure. Yeah, definitely. Because there are a lot of things out there that will help people when they're thinking of starting a business or when they're starting their business, but they're not sure where to find information. But unfortunately, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially ones of color, don't know about resources or don't know how to do research. So um, have you used any or worked with any organizations or came across any great information that helped you with things like a marketing plan or organization plan, how to research your competition, or how did you even know how to, you know, go out and research things for your business? What really helped me is um, I found accelerator programs to go to um, because they give you the blueprint and there's no limitation on how many accelerators you can do. I've done several ones and each one I've learned um, different things from. The last one that I did, which was really good, was the one through um, FedEx. Mm -hmm. um, and actually they're going, they're looking for people to join their next cohort. So if anyone's watching, yeah. go sign up. Um, it's, it's awesome. And I recommend them because out of all of the accelerator programs that I did, um, there comes a point in the time in the program where you're going to basically going to have to advertise and, you know, sell yourself and put yourself out there. And for a lot of people that's uncomfortable and most other programs, they don't give you the tools like flyers for social media, um, links and stuff, or, you know, set you up a website. FedEx really will, they take pictures of your product if you have product or give you headshots. They'll make flyers for you. And then they also sell your stuff on FedEx website. So oh, they'll wow. just send you the links. They put everything in a folder for you. And then you don't have to go try to figure out, well, how can I create a flyer? I don't know how to do that. I don't have a professional picture of my product or headshots. They create everything for you. I didn't experience that in other programs that I got, but I do recommend that FedEx one because they're just like top notch. Yeah, great. Thank you. That is an amazing recommendation. And I absolutely will share it with our community. So I appreciate that. Um, so speaking of the strategy and some of the things that you learned in your business blueprint um, in that accelerator and some other ones, how has your marketing strategy changed since starting your business, either with veganish foodies or the everything sauce or even the veg fest? Has your marketing strategy changed? I know you mentioned social media, which is key. Um, and I'm glad you all take advantage of it because sometimes people just think marketing is just social media. But as you mentioned, there's flyers, there's word of mouth, there's really so much more. So has your marketing strategy changed at all with any of your businesses? Yes. I had to change my marketing strategy with um, vegan foodies and everything sauce because they are kind of connected so people that know me personally, they know us. They're like, oh, that's veganish foodies. And then people that like know us for the sauce, they're like, oh, that's the sauce people. Like, you do you got some sauce right with you right now? Um, right before the pandemic happened, um, we were doing everything together, marketing together. You know, they go hand in hand. The sauce um, introduces you to healthier stuff. So um, we were... All of our marketing, our tagline, our slogans, everything went together with the healthier benefits, focusing on that. And then after the pandemic happened, we had to shift because you couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do anything. So our catering kind of like put on the back burner. And then we had to just focus our sauce because our sauce is our, you know, our staple product. So 
that's what we sell. You can, we were selling it online. The thing about it is that we were doing a lot of in-person events. So we were killing selling the sauce in person and we had to focus on how to scale it online. And that's what I'm saying. I did the FedEx accelerator program and um, I was working on the description the description on how to basically sell and market the sauce because I'm like, I wanted to separate it from the vegan stuff because I'm like, I don't want people to just think that this is a vegan sauce. Most sauces are vegan. If you eat ketchup or anything, they're basically vegan. So I don't, I want to separate that and reach a body audience. And I didn't know how to basically come up with a new description from the one that I was slinging for the past two years. So mm -hmm. that was like really hard. Um, and, um, if you have a Shopify store, if you're, if you have anything that you're selling online, I still, I'm going to keep recommending the FedEx because that it's all structured around like how to start and scale, um, a, an online e-commerce store. So I got a lot of help from them as far as how to create a new description to reach new people, um, how to basically market and how your, you know, your pictures and your engagement and stuff really plays a major key on how to um, connect with your audience. So because I needed to separate the two and basically come up with a new way to market the sauce, I definitely had to change and let go of everything that I was so used to saying, which was really hard for me to do mm -hmm. at the beginning, but I got it. <laughs> so everything is all separated now and I have to have a different strategy on how to market them. And then I would also say that uh, you can never get too comfortable with what you're saying and how you're marketing because there's always new apps coming out. There's always new ways to create content coming out and you have to keep up with them so that you're keeping up with the, the trends and you know basically being tech savvy. Um, you kind of just have to get in there and figure it out. So it's always going to change. Absolutely. Right. And I'm glad you said that because, yeah, COVID made everybody shift. Right. Which to me, everyone's like, oh, COVID's so bad. But I'm like, no, in a lot of ways, COVID's good because it did make people think out of the box and sometimes have to change their marketing. And like you said, things that they say. But even the other thing, technology, like technology is always changing. People are always coming up with new things. So no one can get stagnant. So you're exactly right. Um, one of the areas where some entrepreneurs of color in particular struggle is customer service. Can you tell us what customer service means to you? And what do you do to ensure your customers have a positive experience, whether they've either purchased one of your products or um, been one of your clients or attended one of your events? Yes, customer service literally is the key to your business. So I think that the major thing for people to understand, especially us Black community, is that you're, you are a business owner, but your customer basically runs your business and you provide the customer service. If you don't provide good customer service, you're going to not have a business. You're not going to make any sales. You're not going to grow a community. So you have to be friendly, you have to smile, you have to be responsive and follow up. Those are like the two major things. And then also, you know, if someone's coming with a complaint or, you know, that you ship something and uh, case in point, if I ship something and a bottle breaks, like I'm going to apologize. I'm going to send you two extra bottles in the next time that I send so that you know that, you know, I feel bad. I want to replace it. I want you to come back and be a repeat customer. I want you to feel that you were heard and that I provided another solution for you to, to feel that I understand that something got messed up, even if it was out of my control. Here's what I'm going to do to fix it. If I'm giving you a discount or a coupon or, you know, um, a way to get some food and some sauce for the next go around. You're just always basically being um, a good provider to your customers because your customers are the face basically of your business and they are the ones who are either going to give you a lot of good reviews or a lot of negative reviews. And even if you have a lot of good reviews, one or two bad reviews can shift people <laughs> completely. It doesn't matter how many good reviews you have. So you always want to focus on 
just being as positive as you can be and responsive as you can be to um, your customers because they are the lifeline of your business and you want to always keep your lifeline, you know, you that little line, you want to keep it going. You don't want to flat line. <laughs> Absolutely. Great analogy. Yeah. And it's great to hear your perspective on customer service because you're exactly right. And I can tell by the way you deal with your customers that you're going to be in business for a long time because you appreciate them. I wish everyone would develop the same mindset that you have about customer service. So thank you. Um, okay. So I want to give you an opportunity in the show notes. Um, when this episode airs, we're definitely going to share like your website, your social media and anything else. But I want to ask you, um, I know you mentioned VegFest is coming up. You can give us again what that date is. And then any other events or um, special things that are going on in your businesses that you want to share, if you can let us know what they are. Yeah, for sure. So VegFest is going down on April 10th from 12 to 5.30 p.m., right here in Springfield, Mass. at 100 Acorn Street. And it is free for you to attend. Please bring your kids. Um, we still are accepting vendors also. You can get all the information by going to www.vegfest413, all one word, dot com. And you'll see all the information on there. You want to sign up for a vendor. You want to be a sponsor. You want to donate. Just go right there. You're going to get everything that you need. Um, I will also share. Um, I have some sauce here. So um, we have two sizes now, which is a good thing because before we only had one size. So we're growing. And um, everything sauce can be found at everythingsauce.com. That's everything with an A, not an I. You can order. We ship to all states. Um, if you're here in Springfield area, you don't have to pay any shipping. We'll deliver it straight out to you. Um, if you're in the Hartford, um, Connecticut area, you can go to the Russell Grab and Go restaurant. They sell our sauce there. They have two everything sauce meals that you can get there currently. Um, and then also you can also just ask for a side of sauce. Even if you're not getting the everything meal, you can get a side of sauce with whatever you ordered there. If you are here in Springfield, Mass., you can go downtown to Dewey's Jazz Lounge. They have everything sauce wings. Um, I just found out they just made an everything sauce pasta. So yeah. they're always coming out with new everything sauce dishes. And you can buy our bottles of sauce there directly as well. Um, or if you can't, if you're not in any of those places, you can just order online and we'll ship it to you. Um, as far as veganish foodies, um, we're still doing catering, but it's kind of like if people call us and reach out, we're not, we, um, because we're shifting, we recently, um, bought a food trailer. So we're working on building that out so that we can reach a bigger audience for our catering events. So that's kind of like on the back burner. But if you're in Springfield on March 12th, um, we are doing a vegan brunch pop-up. And um, it's going to be a lot of vegan food all hosted and catered by us. And it's um, free to attend. So if you are available from 11 to 2 um, on March 12th, come on out to the Monsoon Roastery here in Springfield. And you'll be able to have a nice vegan brunch. Um, so that's kind of like all the events that we have going on right now, but you can always follow us on all of our social medias, um, veganish foodies, uh, everything sauce and veg trust 413 on all social media platforms. Perfect. Okay. We will definitely check you out. Now I kind of think I know the answer to this, but I have to ask just in case I'm surprised if, Someone wants you to travel to one of their festivals that are outside of Massachusetts. Are you all available to participate in other pop-up in events? It sounds like you all have a full plate. So I don't know how available you are to travel. Oh, yeah, yeah. We travel. We always travel. If people have events, we would love to attend and be a part of them. Um, we are doing some events that are outside of you know, what we have personally going on this year. So, um, yeah, we're always open. People can um, send an email to veganishfoodies at gmail.com 
And we're always like super responsive. So if you have an event, especially if it's vegan, plant-based, we're definitely always open to being a part. Perfect. Okay. That is great to know because I'm sure some people will want to reach out to you and get some of that good vegan food and sauce. So great to know. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So before we close, India, I have one final question to ask you. And I always kind of end all of our interviews in a similar way. What piece of advice from your experience would you give either a new or perspective or a brand? Well, yeah, kind of a new or perspective entrepreneur of color, right? What would you either an advice to encourage them or something you kind of wish that someone told you that, you know, helps you out? What would you say to an entrepreneur of color? That's a really good question. And gosh, I have so many things that I could say. Um, I think the main thing that I would want to instill in our community is um, to be open-minded. I feel like we're so closed-minded and we're so stuck in our ways. Like, this is how I grew up. This is how it's always been. Why do I have to do that? It doesn't matter. And it does matter. Like, you have to take your own life into your own hands, especially if you want to open a business. You have to be open minded. You have to be willing to do the um, long, boring work because the work is what's going to get you to the end results. We can't, there's no shortcuts to anything, especially inside business. So, um, be open minded, be willing to do the long, boring work, and be willing to uh, work with the willing. There's people out there that want to help you. I know there's like a stigma in our community that um, people don't want to help us or that we're all in competition with each other and we're all like against each other. Like sometimes you have to get outside of our community to find those people to connect with and then come back to your community and do what needs to be done to be like the face of you know, the unity that you're out there searching for. So those would be my my three top things that all together, they kind of all go together is to, yeah, always just be open, be open and flowing because that's how energy goes. Like if you're closed off, it'll bypass you. If you're open, it'll come and it'll keep circulating. So you gotta be open for sure. Absolutely, India. Such valuable information. Thank you so much. Again, everybody that's watching, go check India out. Follow her on social media. Look at her website for upcoming events. If you're in the area, go travel, get some good food, order some everything sauce today, and order some for your neighbors and your friends, some gifts. Um, And just reach out to India if you have any questions about what she's doing in her business, her and Lamont are doing in their business. Um, And even if you just kind of need some questions, Questions, I'm sure she'll be there to answer your questions for you. Um, thank you so oh, much, so- India. Yeah. Okay. I just because I just remember something when you were saying that. I do have, and I do want to show, but I do have. We do. We started this year offering um, coaching. So if Ooh. people want to um, have a coaching a coaching session with us, you can go to vfc.coach.kitchen, Right. Wait, hold on. Coach.vfckitchen.com. You can go there. Um, I do want to show that we wrote a book. <laughs> so we have um, we have a book that we wrote, and it has a lot of good information in there. It's it's I should say I shouldn't say like it strictly, but if you're starting your journey, how I said, like we focus on people who are starting their transition, don't know anything about vegan or plant-based or alternatives or none of that stuff, then you definitely want to grab our book because this book is um, all about the beginning of of our journey. And then um, we're offering coaching for people who don't know where to get started. Um, we have a lot of different challenges that we do as well. <laughs> um, we have a seven-day challenge. We have a 14-day challenge. And we also have a 30-day and an annual 40-day challenge that we do. Um, so we have the resources for you. If you don't know where you to get started, we can, um, see what you're trying to eliminate or incorporate into your diet. And then we have, um, some plans and some tools and some resources that we can, um, share with you and everyone who signs up for a coaching session, um, gets access to our book. So perfect. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know that because, 
That is actually one of the reasons why we started this platform, right? Like most people are like, I don't even know where to go for information. So the fact that you're willing to share your expertise and you have, you know, challenges and things like that that people can get involved with means a lot. So I definitely will make sure we will share all of that and encourage everybody to connect with you um, as well. So thank you so much, India. You said it perfectly. People outside of our community do know information. There is nothing wrong from going out and learning from them, but you know, we need to bring it back and share it. There's no reason for people to be like, I don't know anybody that can help me on my journey. Well, you all just met India. So make sure you connect with her and she can help you on your journey, whether it's starting a business, you know, building a product, hosting an event, becoming a, you know, a plant-based lifestyle, y'all better connect with her. So, all right. Thank you so much, India, for the time that you spent with me this afternoon telling me about your wonderful businesses, your Black-owned family businesses, right? That makes it even better. So thank you so, so much. And I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much. I enjoyed myself. Wow. I know you got a lot from that interview with India. There are so many ways to impact your life, the life of your friends and your family and your future in a positive way. And you don't have to do it all of a sudden or spend a lot of money. Now, for more information about India, Veganish Foodies, her upcoming Veg Fest, that everything sauce that you've got to grab, or even their catering services, be sure to check the show notes down below for all of her contact information. Be sure to like, follow, and share her the same way you want us to support you. Now, if you have questions for India or feedback about this episode, be sure to post it down below as well. If you want to be featured in an upcoming episode or sponsor an episode, reach out to me. My email is info at theblackentrepreneursnetwork.com. Now, as always, this show is brought to you in partnership with Relationship Entertainment Television. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know why not. Do so right now. Hit that red button at the bottom right of your screen. And while you're there, hit the bell so you're notified when new episodes of Entrepreneur Insider premiere every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern right here on RETV. RETV also has a new app on Roku. So it's another way that you can stream all of the positive and engaging programming that they share. Everything from Man Cave to Teen Talk to the news and what's going on. So be sure to visit their website, download their app, and of course, subscribe to their channel. Now, I want to thank you for watching this episode. I look forward to reading your feedback. And until next time, don't forget, be great. Peace. with your weekly RATV news break. Each Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, we'll come to you with the latest news, trends, and more with a positive spin. We know there's a lot of positive news that doesn't get reported, but we want to give you the opportunity to share your story here on RATV. If you have a positive news story you want us to share, you can submit your story to news at re-tv.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the Relationship Entertainment Television YouTube channel. Download the new RATV Live app on your mobile device and follow Relationship Entertainment Television on your favorite social media platform. Don't forget, make sure you tune in to the RATV News Break each Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until, Until then, then, be blessed and be great. Growing up in the church, we saw a lot. Things that people refuse to talk about. The elephants in the room. Mental illness. Sexual abuse. Broken family. Domestic violence. And so much more. The Big E, The Elephant in the Room is a show that sheds light on these topics. We're here to speak about the unspeakable. Welcome to the What's going on? 
name is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics. And sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not so warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On? Hey, it's your girl, Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Right here on IE TV every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there.